welcome to Bistec on Ghana Web TV. My name is Na Oyokote, and I'll be taking you through some business news that trended during the week and an exclusive interview. Many people do not know how to save their monies, and for those who do, they usually leave their monies seated in their accounts without investing to accrue some interest. Now, my colleague Ernestina Sewa Asante sat with two financial experts, Michael J. and Des Amy, who gave us an insight into financial literacy. They would also take us through how to create generational wealth and the need to have multiple streams of income. Stay tuned. People do not know how to save money and the few people who do they just leave their monies to sit in their accounts without investing them now the question is how do we become financial literate today on best tech we sit with some financial experts as they teach us this topic and how to also start a side hustle as well as create generational wealth come with me Today on BizTech, I have with me two financial experts. I've got Des Ame and Michael Lejay. He is a life coach and an entrepreneur, whilst Des is a financial expert. So let us delve straight into the conversation. First of, what is financial literacy? Financial literacy is being able to um, have the right mindset for finances, being able to be in control of your finances um, so we work on you know um, we work on the financial mindset we work on debt management uh, we also work on budgeting and we look at ways in which we can bring more money into the household as well okay what's your take yeah so when it comes to you know financial literacy um, for me it's just simply your ability to be able to um, create wealth you know, um, and manage money. Um, and like what was said, kind of be in control of your finances. Um, that's what financial literacy is. Okay. So, so I'm going to add that most people, they simply spend more than what they're making. Yeah. Um, so for most of our clients, when we sit down, the very first thing that we do is a budget planner. What's coming in and what's going out? And most people are horrified <laughs> when they do this. Most people avoid doing this, but when they do it, um, it's, it's enlightening. So then what we do is we look at two simple things. How can we reduce the outgoings and how can we bring more income in, into the household? We very much believe in having multiple sources of passive income. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do we get other streams of income? It's a very great question. Well, fortunately, you're sitting with two experts <laughs> in this field. Um, you see, the, the problem is the old ways are no longer working, unfortunately. Um, you know, I was given a very simple blueprint for success um, and your listeners and your viewers will probably be familiar with this blueprint. It's simply to study hard, you know, get good grades at school, um, get that good steady job, work hard and maybe work your way up the ladder and, you know, you have the life of, of your dreams. And that was probably true about 40, 50 years ago. But unfortunately now, um, you know, where we're from in, in the UK and very much so right here in Ghana, um, it's difficult for most people who follow that blueprint. You know, for myself, I did that to a T. I worked as a deputy head teacher in London. And, you know, that sounds very good on, on paper. It probably sounds like I should be doing OK financially. But I ended up living paycheck to paycheck. I was broke. When I used to tell, when my cousins used to, you know, um, ask me for gifts and I used to say that I couldn't afford it, I was broke, they couldn't believe it. So what we do now is um, we teach people how not to be in that scenario. And to ask, answer your question directly, um, having passive sources of income has been made easier through two amazing um, revolutions. The first, the internet. 
that we all know and love. It's really impacted us in, in major ways. And the second being the revolution of the blockchain industry. Um, these two things have now provided a plethora of different opportunities that people can take part in. And the best part is that you don't need to be an expert. You don't need to be great. You just need to be, you know, you just need to take action and be um, in the room when, you know, things are being presented. Okay. How about gaining money from property? How do we make money from that? <laughs> so when it, when, it, when it comes to making money from property, we know that, you know, um, history says that, you know, real estate, some people actually say that's actually the real estate when it comes to wealth is about how much land and property that you do have, you know, um, and, you know, again, because of the creation of the internet, there's actually so many ways that you can actually make money from the, the property market. You know, one may simply maybe buy, buy a property, um, hold on to it and wait for the, the, the price to go up and, and then sell. You know, some may buy properties, you know, you've got the whole um, Airbnb market, you know, where you can actually rent them out, you know, during some particular peak seasons. So to be honest, there are several ways you can make money. Um, but what I will say is that the first step that you want to you wanna take is really to have the, the right education. You know, once you kind of put yourself, at, you have a particular goal that you want to be able to achieve financially, then you want to put yourself around the right people I'm around the experts to be able to gain the education that you need to be able to capitalize on whatever industry that, it, that you are in. But property is definitely one, especially here in Ghana. You know, it's really, um, you know, developing at a very fast rate. You know, we can see, especially because of some of the, the huge initiatives by the government, you know, the return, you know, back to the motherland. A lot of people are looking um, at Ghana for great investment opportunities. So people can really capitalize on what is happening and um, specifically in the, the real estate market. Now, people want to start their side hustle, but they don't know the way. Show us the way. You know, what, what I say to individuals, you know, especially for me, I, I always say that you, you have, you know, what you see in the physical, but there's a step as well that you have to also get right, which is the mindset. Because the reality is that everything in this world is created twice. People say how? First in the mind, and then in reality, you know. So, for example, if you look at the iPhone, it was first created in the mind of Steve Jobs. He came up with this concept and then it came into reality. This table, you know, was first created in the architect's mind, then it came into reality. So when it comes to wealth, the wealth that we're looking for, the success or happiness, must first be created in the mind. What financial blueprint do you have? What is your relationship to money? You know, what was your relation? What was your parents relation to money? Because our surroundings kind of shape the way we view money. If we grew up around, you know, parents who were in debt, you know, it's more likely that when we grow up, that's what we're going to be known for. You know, so I will say personally that the first step is to, to really analyze what are your habits? Because your habits actually determine the results that you have. And then once you've really understood that and you start to reprogram your mind, you will know that, you know, anything is possible. You will no longer allow, whether it's lack of education, whether it's the economy to control your financial freedom, because you know that it first starts here and then you'll see it in, in reality. So for me, that's kind of the first step into gaining financial freedom. Okay, so there's some Ghanaians do have ideas but they don't know how to implement it. Sometimes it's the money they want to start the business. In such a case, do you advise that um, they look out for these investors to work with or they still would have to wait and then hustle more to get their own finances before they start a project? Um, I'll say there's, there's two approaches. Um, yes, there are people um, out there that you can partner with. We, we call it a joint venture partnership. So what you have in many industries are people that have the ideas, but they don't have the capital. And then you have people that have money and they're looking for ways to grow their money. They're looking for ways to um, you know, start projects, but they don't have the time um, and they don't have the ideas. So now you have this perfect match where they, they complement each other. So um, venture capitalists, uh, the people that do this, um, angel investors. So yes, if you have the right idea and you, um, you know, seek these kind of people, 
then that could be a perfect match. However, what I'm really an advocate for is building your own wealth. And fortunately, we live in a time now where there are many different ways in which to create wealth. We're here now as part of an eight country tour. Um, we started in uh, Kenya, then uh, Tanzania, Zanzibar, Zambia, Nigeria, and, and now we're here. And what we're finding is that there are people that start with you know very humble beginnings that have been able to find these opportunities, take full advantage of them, and now many of them are six and seven figure income earners in, in, um, in dollars, um, American dollars. So people with ideas can engage with these types of um, online opportunities to create the wealth, to then invest in themselves. And the obvious advantage is that now they have full ownership because if you do a joint venture partnership, you're, ob you're obviously having to give away um, some of the ownership. So they're the two options, but I would say um, to um, engage, you know, in investigate some of these online opportunities, build some passive income, invest in your own project and have full ownership. Okay, so we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, we delve more into the topic. Welcome back from that quick break. Okay, now we are going to talk about how to create generational wealth. So let me start with you, Michael. How do we create generational wealth as youth? So the, the way in which you kind of create generational wealth um, is really to create wealth that, you know, outlasts you. You know, um, we're living in a generation where, you know, many people are just kind of limited to a, a job. Now, to have a job is a great thing, you know, to be employed, working hard for your money. But if that's all where your income is coming from, then there's a problem. The limitation is that, you know, you are only exchanging your time and your effort for money. So there's a limit to the amount of money that you can make because there's only 24 hours in a day. The other limitation to just having a job um, is that if you die, you cannot pass your job on to your children. You know, when you die, your employer will be putting up a post. However sad or hard worker that you are, there'll be a job advert out, you know, straight away. So the way in which you kind of create generational wealth is you want to create an income, you know, where you can actually leverage other people, other systems and make money while you sleep. Because, you know, Warren Buffett, who's one of the richest, you know, men in the world said that if you... Um, do not make money while you sleep. You'll work until you die. So you want to be able to, you know, have what you call passive income. Now, passive income is where you do something once, but you continually get paid from it. And that's how you can now build generational wealth because you now have a system in place that will continue to pay you even when you die. So for example, even having a business you know, a profitable business, you know, that has a system that works without you. Because many people, they have a business, but if they leave their business, their business will collapse. And that's, that's a problem here, especially here in Ghana, that they are tied to their business. But if you're able to create maybe a system that a business can run without you, even when you, you die or you leave it, you can pass that on. So I'll say the first way in which you can create generational wealth is to start to explore some of these ideas you know a book that i highly recommend um is a book called rich dad poor dad yeah, I've read that by robert kiyosaki it's an incredible book yeah. it really breaks down the cash flow quadrant four ways in which you can make an income two ways which is employment and self-employed is where you exchange your time and effort money but the right hand of the quadrant is where you have a business or your an investor an investor is where your money is now working for you you're no longer working for money. You put your money somewhere and it continues to grow. You know, because as Ghanaians, our parents have been still in us, work hard, work hard, you know, work from morning to night and you can get money, which is great. But the limitations of what I've explained. 
Okay, so aside putting your money in the bank or making investments in government T-bills, stock market, what other ways can we ex explore to also make sure our monies work for us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there's a whole plethora um, of different options. We touched on, on property earlier. You know, property is a great way to have, um, you know, generational wealth. It's important when we think about generational wealth that it's not just leaving a lump sum or a property because the reality is um, it may only last one generation. It just takes one rogue member to, you know, squander the money. Um, so, I mean, I think of examples like, you know, Michael Jackson. Last year, Michael Jackson made over $150 million for his estate. And the guy has, has passed away, you know, but that's the power of, of, of generational wealth, having something that's consistently paying long after that you've gone. Um, we, again, touch on the internet. So there are things that you can do online, um, such as um, Forex trading, for example, that's ways to, to bring in income. But the profits that's made from Forex trading can go into an estate. So when it comes to generational wealth, not to get too technical, but if you have a good estate planner, you can put your assets and you can put your income into a trust. Now, a trust is where um, now you have a vehicle that is being um, invested in different places so that it's consistently generating an income that the um, executors of the estate can tap into um, at any given time. Talking about the forex market, does it mean that if the CD depreciates, I buy the dollar and then keep it? If it appreciates, then I change or vice versa? I, I'm sure people would want to know more about it. Yeah, so, um, you know, that particular example that you gave is actually physical forex trading. Mm -hmm. You know, where you, you, you buy the physical, you know, cash and wait for, you know, appreciations before you buy or sell. But there's actually ways in which you can do it actually online. And in fact, that's one of the ways in which the banks multiply our money, you know, because Forex trading, foreign exchange is actually a six, you know, trillion dollar a day industry. That's how much, you know, goes through the foreign exchange. Um, and you can it's actually educational platforms that can actually teach you how to analyze the market um, and teach you when to buy or sell. You know, so that's actually a way in which people can actually, you know, learn a skill that would allow their, their money to, to, to work for them. But what I would say to individuals is you really, um, is not just jump in today and you make money tomorrow. You know, you really wanna, um, you know, have the right education and the right mentorship around you. You know, because we say that, you know, formal education will make you a living, but it's your self-education that will make you a fortune. And Forex trading is, is one of those. Okay, so as experts, tell us the basic principles or financial principles in life. Okay, um, okay. So first of all, I'll, I'll give three. I'll give four financial principles, okay. um, and then I want to give a really good piece of advice as well for building generational wealth. Okay. Um, so some of them we've touched on, and the first is to find ways to bring in passive income. You know, just to labour the point that my colleague made. It's so important that we have money. That's working for us rather than we're working for money. Um, so passive income, number one. And number two is having multiple sources of income. You see, most of us, most people rely on one source of income and there's so much pressure on that one source. We have multiple bills, but we only have one income. It, it doesn't make sense. So, you know, this is biblical. In Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse two, it actually states that we should have multiple sources of income for we do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Um, three is to um, enjoy something called compound interest. Compound interest. You see, most people, they save money and, and they you know, hope for the best. They just hope that the interest they get from the bank will, will be okay. But when you understand the power of compounding, so for example, my colleague um, touched on you know, Forex trading. Most Forex traders, what they will do is they will retain their profits and use that money to, to trade with so that they're now compounding and having exponential growth on, on their account. And you can do this on, with, with many income generating um, sources. You can use the money that's coming in and, and compound. So compound interest um, is very powerful and leverage. 
being able the power of leverage being able to leverage a system or being able to um, leverage people jd rockefeller famously said that i would rather make um a uh, hundred dollars on a hundred people's time um than making a hundred percent i'd rather make one percent of a hundred people's time than making a hundred percent of my own time it's being able to leverage you know if you've got a team of people working for you that's leverage but you can also leverage systems as well so they're my you know my four main keys but going back to generational wealth a very important topic and sometimes often a taboo is to have a good life insurance policy this is something that's very important so as a piece of action i would want every single listener um, even if they're very young in fact if you're very young this is the best time to do it is to speak to um, a financial expert about a life insurance policy and to put that policy into a trust it's okay. Very okay michael um for young entrepreneurs who are striving to be seen in the limelight or want to make it in life what's your advice to them you know so for those young entrepreneurs you know um first of all you know congratulations to them you know because you know being an entrepreneur is like what we've been speaking about your ability to be able to leverage create a business you know that will be working for you and you know for those who are you know they have big goals i would say for them to be very specific and write them down you know yes they're striving but when you have a particular goal no matter how big it is in fact make it so big that it scares you you know but what that will do will keep you focused because the road in entrepreneurship is not easy you know even if we look at for example um jeff bezos um when he started amazon he was really seeking out you know investment for this platform to sell books and many people you know said no this ain't gonna work but because his goal was very specific and he was so passionate about it he kept going and we know where he is today, one of the most richest men in the world. So I would say, you know, be very clear about what you want, especially in the field that you're in. Be passionate about it because that's what's going to keep you going even when things are not going wrong. Because sometimes we pick areas that we think are huge, but there's no real passion about behind it. So when we hit a, a bumpy road, we will tend to give up. Always be a student. You know, no matter how good you think you are in that field there is always something to learn so always seek to improve yourself seek to you know um sharpen your skills because you know some people for example you know a, a lady may think that she's maybe the best nail you know technician or hairdresser or car mechanic so they stop learning but you can continually improve yourself you know because the more you sharpen your skills maybe one day you'll be doing you know someone's car who's very influential so i i, I give those three tips be passionate set high goals and always be a student so we have an event um that is actually happening on friday um, um at Morven pick um hotel at 4 p.m it's actually part of an eight country tour we're actually traveling eight countries um to really empower individuals um give them um, a, a a mindset shift but also a vehicle in which they can create generational wealth. You know, a lot of people are looking for ways in which they can, you know, make passive incomes and incomes outside of what it is that they do have multiple streams. And this is exactly what this event is going to give you. A very detailed plan of how you can be financially independent and create wealth. So that's going to be happening on Friday um, at 4 p.m. It's actually going to be a, a giveaway. We're actually going to be giving away 4,000 Ghana cities, oh, wow. giving it away. And that's to the individual that brings the most people, you know, because, you know, you know, when you have such a blessing, it's a blessing to be able to share it with other people um, and impact other people. So the individual that brings the most people will get that 4,000 Ghana cities. And it's not just going to be in Accra. We're actually going to be having the event on the 15th on Friday, Good Friday, um, um, at Kwame Nkrumah University. Okay. So for those of you who are in Kumasi, you know, that's going to be at 1 p.m. Um, 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 at Tech University. But those here in Accra are going to be at Morven Pick um, on Friday. Is it free or it comes at a charge? We're actually doing it for free. Oh, wow. We've actually, you know, self-funded the whole tour. Um, and because we're really passionate about what it is that we're going to be teaching. All right. I know we've been learning a lot. And today on BizTech, you have learned a thing or two from it. If for nothing at all, you've not learned anything, don't just sit down. At least 
make sure you have multiple sources of income for you to also create generational wealth for yourself and your generation. Ernestina Sawa Asante reporting for Bistec on Ghana Web TV. Thank you very much, Ernestina Sewa Asante, for that insightful interview. I hope you learned a thing or two. Up next is Biz Headlines. Now to our very first story on the Bank of Ghana. The central bank is cautioning public, especially businesses, companies, and institutions to desist from pricing, advertising, and receiving payments in foreign currencies. According to the central bank, individuals or entities engaged in the illegal act risk imprisonment of not more than 18 months or fines upon summary conviction. In a statement issued by the bank, it said, Companies, institutions, and individuals who are prohibited from engaging in foreign exchange business without a license issued by the Bank of Ghana, or pricing, advertising, receiving, or making payments for goods and services in foreign currency in Ghana without written authorization from the Bank of Ghana. The bank also said such violations are punishable on summary conviction by a fine of up to 700 penalty units or a term of imprisonment of not more than 18 months or both. The 2020 state ownership report shows that government received 275.48 million Ghana cities as dividends from state-owned enterprises in the same year. These dividends represented an increase of 164.96%, which makes about 171.5 million Ghana cities over the year of 2019. Compared to 2019, there was a shortfall of 15.46 million Ghana cities, but far higher than the dividend paid in 2019. The mining sector paid 224.77 million Ghana cities as dividends to government. This is compared to 38.48 million Ghana cities in 2019. Now on fraudulent activities, the Economic and Organized Crime Office has arrested four persons who have been engaged in SIM swap fraud. The action was undertaken by the Yoko in collaboration with the Ghana Association of Bankers. Ransford Nana Ado Jr., a representative of the Association of Bankers, said the suspects were picked up at various locations in the country for colluding and illegally accessing the accounts of some Ghanaians from which they stole various amounts. It emerged that they managed to withdraw an amount of about 200,000 Ghana cities in their modus operandi before their cover was blown and subsequently apprehended by the security agencies which was working closely with the banks. Vice President Dr. Mahamadou Baumia has stated that the MPP government has so far reduced or abolished 18 separate taxes. According to him, despite these tax reductions, revenue collection in nominal CD terms have increased since 2017. Speaking during the State of the Economy lecture, the Vice President indicated it is important to point out that notwithstanding the revenue challenges that we inherited when we came into office, we took the decision to reduce taxes in the economy. It is important to point out that notwithstanding the revenue challenges that we inherited when we came into office, we took the decision to reduce taxes in the economy. In fulfillment of our manifesto promise to move the economy from a focus of ta on taxation to a focus on production, we have so far reduced or abolished 18 separate taxes and levies, and most of them were manifesto promises. No such broad-based reduction in taxes has been implemented by any government since independence. No such since independence. We abolished the 5% VAT on real estate sales, abolished the 17.5% VAT 
on selected imported medicines, abolished the 17.5% VAT on financial services, abolished the import duty on the importation of spare parts, abolished the 1% special import levy, abolished the 175 VAT on domestic airline tickets. To our final story on debt stock, Vice President Dr. Mahamadou Baumia has said Ghana's huge debt stock can be blamed on the financial cleanup exercise that resulted in the collapse of some nine local banks as well as the COVID-19 pandemic. Addressing Tesco at Kaswa in the central region, Dr. Baumia said a country's debt to GDP ratio had increased by 17.6% between 2019 and 2021. COVID expenditures alone were not sufficient to explain the increase in our fiscal deficit. The fiscal deficit to GDP in Ghana increased by threefold compared to 1.23 for Nigeria, 1.02 for Egypt, and 2.43 for Cote d'Ivoire. In addition to COVID-19, there were two major items of expenditure. In addition to COVID-19, there were two major items of expenditure that are critical to understanding the evolution of the fiscal deficit and the debt stock, the banking sector cleanup, and the energy sector excess capacity payments. <laughs>